Kingdom and see what's new about BFM, now led by Pastor Dave and Angie Burroughs, multi-generational leaders focused on making the vision plain to a new generation. There's a place for everyone here. Children, youth, millennials, singles, families, professionals, and entrepreneurs. Join us Sundays at 10 at our Carmichael Road campus or online via the BFM app. We promise you, your life will never be the same. Before we get started, we have a special selection from our praise and worship team. Enjoy.
Monroe Press presents Black Sun, White Mother, written by Charlie Masara and Gail Vermeulen. In this book, Charlie Masara and Gail Vermeulen converted their personal experiences into an excellent work. This book will challenge and motivate you to rise to the occasion in internalizing diversity in your life and work. The reader is taking on a unique journey to unlocking the potential of diversity in the workplace from the genesis of diversity in chapter 1 right through to embracing diversity in chapter 22. The strength of the book lies in its practical wisdom expressed in succinct yet profound pieces of insight and advice. Order your personal copy online at MonroeGlobal.com or any leading bookstore near you. Welcome back. Don't forget to get your pens and paper out. You're going to need to take notes. Here's Charlie Masala. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Kingdom School of Empowered Living. This is Charlie Masala uh, from South Africa. I'm so glad to be able to participate on this program uh, and thank you Dr. Dave Barrows and Mum Angie for your invitation and continuous invitation to participate uh, in these programs. Any, you know, any time I'm invited, you know, to participate uh, in my father's house, I am excited and uh, you are family to me. So thank you for your relationship over the years and uh, I'm excited today to, 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 to be given this platform to be able to, to share some of my thoughts uh, also based on the book that uh, I've just released uh, called Black Sun, White, White Mother, which is basically a diversity uh, material, which is a diversity book. But I'm going to be honing into a subject today, uh, which is about overcoming diversity barriers uh, to effective leadership. And of course, I bring you greetings from uh, my wife, Koli, as well as uh, Zoe, my daughter, uh, Kona and, uh, and Andisa, they have sent their love to you. I just want to remind you that uh, I was born in a village uh, north of South Africa in a place called Venda in 1971. When I was born, uh, we didn't have democracy at the time. I was not born in a democracy. I was born in an apartheid state, a state uh, of, uh, you know, the white a minority, minority rule of uh, in South Africa and uh, based on my struggles as a young man growing up and uh, you know looking different from you know some of the few people in our country and uh, you know started to cause this started to you know raise questions in my in, in, in my mind and I grew up very inquisitive about uh, the subject of diversity and uh, you know, no wonder I had to write about it. But I was born in a village. Uh, my mother used to, we lived in huts, and my mother used to make uh, fire in the middle of the hut. One side of the hut, she kept uh, kitchen utensils. So the other side of the same hut uh, is where she used to, you know, she would keep the goats and, 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 and chickens. And the other side of the same hut uh, was, uh, you know, our, our bedroom. My brothers and I lived in that uh, kitchen, you know, darkened, darkened with smoke, and that was our life. And uh, we have been, you know, believers, you know, since, uh, I mean, since, at, since very, very, very early in my, in my life, because uh, I was raised in a home uh, where the, my father and my mother were believers. But we were, we were actually uh, forced to accept the reality that we found ourselves in, you know, you know, raising and growing up uh, in that situation where you know we were segregated against, and there was so much racism in our country, we actually were you know relegated uh, to be second-class, third-class uh, citizens uh, because those who, who who have kept us under the law of apartheid. Uh, made sure that the yoke was really doing its job on us. But today, of course, uh, is different. I live a different life now. Of course, uh, we have moved to Pretoria and, uh, and started working here and so on. But my life really changed 
when I came across a man called Dr. Miles Monroe, and uh, he really helped me to understand the, my value as a human being and the fact that even though I'm black, that I was born for a purpose and I was born for a reason, and my life has been about that. So I, 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 I pause here to thank Dr. Miles and Mama Ruth for their work uh, in my life and for their guidance and for uh, for their you know uh, th their job the job that they did as pa as parents and mentors uh, to me over for over 25 years and I, I I remain really grateful for that relationship that I've had with them over the years and I was able to travel many many countries with them so today of course they say that uh, the mangoes don't fall too far from the mango tree. And today, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I become an author. I co-authored a book called, uh, you know, Black Son, White Mother uh, with Gail from Yellen. And the book, it's now out. And we, we launched it just uh, on Heritage Day in South Africa, the 24th of September. And uh, the book has been getting great reviews, you know, uh, from big media, uh, television, uh, you know, channels and uh, radios and newspapers. And we just, we just, we just glad and we just thankful to God that uh, uh, the book is getting the, the kind of, uh, you know, attention that a book like this should, uh, deserves on diversity. And uh, you can get this book from monroeglobal.com you can also get the book from uh, you can order it from amazon you can also order it from black sun white mother.com so you will be able to get to get the book so where do we start with this uh, you know powerful discussion that we have today this is going to be a, a very much of a conversation and i would like to you know wrestle with your mind around uh, a number of concepts in diversity uh, and of course, a great place to start. I think let's start with the, with the, with 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 what I call the genesis of diversity. You know, the 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 creator of diversity is God. So if you want to understand why people are different and what makes people different, and the reasoning behind that, really, the one who knows it is the one who created uh, it. So that is the manufacturer. That's God. Is the one who created us. So. We can try and understand it ourselves, and we can fight over it, but truly, it it doesn't it doesn't help. I think what we need to do as humans is to understand that God created us differently, and He created us differently for a purpose, you know. And uh, you know, uh, Paul says uh, in Galatians three verse twenty eight, and he says this: neither Jew nor Gentile, or neither. Uh, slave nor free or neither male or female but we are one in Christ I think that is the that is the take home that uh, I would like you to, to 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 have today that all of us are in Christ and when we are in Christ all of us whether we are blacks whites Indian colored uh, yellow green it doesn't matter we are in Christ and when we are in Christ of course we become new creatures. So even if we were, you know, we were, we, we, we were racist before, when we come to Christ and get to understand the knowledge of the truth, uh, we, 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 we get, uh, you know, we get reborn and we get to change our ideas about who man is because the only one who understands man is the one who created man, and that is God. So as we talk about the genesis of diversity, of, of course, uh, you know, genesis... Uh, chapter 2 verse verse 7 it talks about god going to the to the ground you know god went to the ground uh, to create man and he went to the ground only once it is interesting that god only went once and he never went back to the ground to create another man so that actually tells us that uh, in the genesis of this diversity god is starting with one and from one man all the nations of the of the of the of the earth and the world uh, were born. So 
basically if you look at it you will you will realize that uh, there's no need for you uh, to think that you are the best uh, race or you are the best ethnic group or you are the best this and that no all humans were created equal by god and god loved all of them remember he create god created man in his image and after his likeness so we are like god you know god has created us uh, you know powerfully so so the the sooner we understand that we are all you know god's creatures and we are created the same way for same reason then you would be able to appreciate the pe- the next person uh, you know even even though they may not look like you uh, of course uh, you know in the kingdom we shouldn't be dealing with racism because if you understand as a kingdom citizen that when god created man he created man in his own image then you know that every human that you meet every man or woman that you meet regardless of their color skin color they were created by by god so it is actually impossible uh, to be both a believer in the gospel and in the kingdom and be a racist you can't be both why because for you to be a racist you got to believe that uh, you know god made a mistake when he created others uh, different color than yours and as you know you know this all these issues are things that have come with the fall you know mankind is supposed to be one with itself okay but of course we need to deal with some few things here and i call it uh, you know decolonization of theology our theology you know uh, as i was growing up of course uh, we were shown a picture of jesus and this picture of jesus is a is a white male you know blonde hair and blue eyes and this is the this is the jesus that was introduced to us in pictures whether you went to a roman catholic church or you went to a dutch reformed church whatever church you went to when they give you those books uh, all jesus is that i saw were white male and you know uh, you know with uh, uh, blonde hair and blue eyes <laughs> as if really uh, jesus jesus was the was 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 that man and you know we learned as as we go i learned that uh, actually uh, we have been you know our gospel or our theology needs to be decolonized because the colonizers gave us the picture of Jesus that they wanted to portray and that Jesus and you know uh, in the context of us in South Africa uh, favored the white man because he looked really you know like you know he, 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 we were we were convinced and i think also the most of the missionaries did a great job of uh, helping us to know that Jesus was white and that it was never corrected even when our brothers went to uh, college they still came back and, and 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 show us the same the same man as Jesus and this of course caused uh, some problems in some of us because uh, you know we were oppressed by the whites and then Jesus is white and then they tell us that uh, you know a white person it's more you know important even theologically it's more you know worth more than the, the the black person you know as if the black person is a you know second third citizen uh, than the white and of course that uh, you know damaged uh, a lot of our psyche as it comes to uh, theology and that is why i say we must decolonize theology so that people get to know uh, the reality and i'm not trying to say the the the, the black jesus would is the best one or the white or whatever i'm just saying that uh, even th- historically anyway uh, people who lived in that area you know just north of us here uh, they, they 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 could not have been white <laughs> so so when we use pictures to 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 try and portray a uh, a an, an image obviously that image will be what peop- what will remain in the in the heads and the minds and the psyche of of the people so as you know really the principle is it's is what matters it could have been any color 
So the point I'm making is not, I'm not trying to say Jesus could have been in whatever color. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that uh, it, is, it, it is more important for us to know that there's someone who died for us and that person was Jesus. But uh, to give pictures, uh, all I'm trying to say is that it have, you know, it have somehow contributed to how we see, we see this Jesus. So we are to decolonize the, to urgently, urgently uh, decolonize uh, our theology. You know, uh, I mean, when you look at uh, in the situation of South Africa, for example, it was the Dutch Reformed Church who gave an, an, an ideology called apartheid. They gave it and supported it with a, with a theology uh, that, a, you know, according to the Bible, a black person is supposed to be a subservient of uh, the white person. And almost like, you know, uh, white people are the ones who are who have the right to be around and uh, we don't have the right to be around obviously of course that cost us a lot of problems that we are still dealing with today and these kind of uh, of course problems are what as a, as kingdom citizens and as a church we are to face this thing because it looks like as though that uh, every ideology requires and needs a theology to justify it if somebody say that I am doing, I'm, 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 I'm better than you, and uh, that's what God is saying. Because we loved God, we, we believed it for a while. You know, so we need to, there is a need to uh, obviously uh, decolonize uh, that. Okay, so the theology, as I said, apartheid government of South Africa, uh, you know, was given a theology by a church. Uh, that the black man was created inferior and that uh, uh, and to that it was God's will for the whites uh, to be superior uh, to blacks. So that's what we, we, we find ourselves having to deal with. So, and as we talk about diversity, and I'm saying this because in our context as South Africa, obviously it was not just uh, uh, an idea that people were giving themselves, it was also justified by a theology. So, as you know, as kingdom citizens, we, we have a delegated kingship. We are kings because we serve, we, you know, he is the, Jesus is the king of kings, which is us. So we have been delegated with this kingship. Uh, look at Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, for example, which says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, and everything that creepeth on the ground. So you can see that God's intention was to create, uh, you know, a, a race, one race called men. One race called a human race. That is what God created. And of course, uh, he created all of us and given us one mandate. All of us have one mandate, and uh, of course you can see that God, you know, uh, you know, God, as He is all knowing, He knew that some some of us are going to be tempted to think that we are better than others. He even gave us a list. He says, uh, "This is what you need to dominate over." He says, uh, "Fish of the sea, of the birds of the air, and every creeping thing that creepeth on the ground, and cattle, and so on." And uh, in that list, of course, a human is not mentioned. And it's not mentioned for the reason that it was never God's will for one, uh, you know, race or one human to dominate the other human. You can dominate, uh, he says, dominate, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the earth resources, dominate the environment, not each other. So, of course, uh, we found ourselves having to dominate each other. But uh, I want to remind you that uh, God's agenda for mankind and how he blesses us is when we are united. It is God's, uh, it is God's plan, God's will for men.
to be united, for mankind to be united, regardless of their skin color, of their origin, of their geographical location, uh, regardless of whatever orientation uh, you, 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 you might have come across. Uh, all of us are to unite. And the Bible says that uh, in, in Psalm 133, verse 3, it says that, uh, you know, where there is unity, where we are united as mankind, the Bible says that there the Lord commands his blessing. So we don't just want to be united uh, for nothing or for the goodness of politics or to be politically correct, but we want unity because in this unity, that is where God will bless our economies, that's where God will bless our countries, that's where God will bless our you know, prosperity as nations. So, uh, so, so uh, uh, unity it's very, uh, it's very, very important. However, unity requires diversity. You're not able to, to, to you, you need things which are different to be able to bring unity. So if things are the same, you know, uh, of course, there's no, uh, where there's no diversity, uh, you know, there's no necessity for that unity, but unity comes uh, you know, it's, 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 it's actually uh, for us to be united, we need to be, to be diverse. And all of us, black, white, Indian, all races, uh, you know, which or, 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 should, or should I say, all, uh, you know, colors are supposed to come together, all colors of mankind and all sizes, all genders, all humans, are to come together in their diversity to be able to unite. And the Bible says when we unite like that, God will command his blessing. But when we keep fighting, of course, uh, you know, God is not going to bless us. So we need his blessing. So let's stay united. Unity requires diversity, but unity is not uniformity. We don't have to be uniformed. You don't have to look like me or dress like me or do things like me. And I don't have to do things like you. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we are different. We are all different for a purpose, you know, but we don't have to be uniformed. But we do need uh, to, be, to be united. So unity is it's, it's a very important uh, uh, fe feature that we need to celebrate. There is no one superior culture. The only superior culture is the kingdom culture. So we're supposed to be united in, in the culture of, uh, of heaven. And the culture of heaven, is, is, it's, it's very easy to know what that culture is because we've been given the Ten Commandments. If you look at the Ten Commandments, can you just imagine if all countries of the world will just follow the Ten Commandments? Can you imagine what kind of peace will be in the world? where people don't steal, where people don't commit adultery, where people don't, uh, you know, don't molest kids, where, you know, a, a world where, you know, there's no gender-based violence and we're living in peace. And, uh, you know, that's the world that, uh, you know, when God gave us the Ten Commandments, he wanted us to live in peace like that. But obviously we messed it up because we, we, we believe we can help ourselves. I'm here to remind you that whatever God has put in place, he has put in place because he knew that mankind will need all these sets of, of rules uh, to operate by. You know, so God knows best. He put principles in place for us. So I'm here to also remind you that, that there is no one superior culture. Uh, whether it's a Japanese culture, or Indonesian culture, African culture, and so forth. All those things really don't matter. What matters is the kingdom culture. And of course, we celebrate all different cultures uh, in terms of our heritage. That's no problem in doing that. But when you start to, 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 to take your culture to be superior to others, that is where you cause problems as it comes to, uh, to diversity. And you've got to realize that your difference is what makes you unique. It's not your sameness to other people, but your difference makes you unique. So celebrate 
the fact that you're different and celebrate the fact that others are different. And when we are all different and we all think differently, that is what we need to make life exciting. Why? Because there's something that I need in you, there's something that you need in me. So when we come together united, uh, you know, and, and we are different, that uniqueness that we have makes us necessary in the world. I'm all here also to remind you that uh, you are, as you are, you don't have to change. I can't change my skin color. I'm black, dark, uh, tall, and handsome for a purpose. And I believe that I'm perfect for my purpose, and that is you. You are perfect for your purpose. So never feel that uh, you should be looking, you should be having a sharp nose if you don't have, or you should be having a lighter skin and so forth. Uh, you don't have to be, to feel that way. Everyone, you know, we are 7.8 billion people on the planet today, and all of us are so needed, are so necessary. And diversity is a beautiful thing. It helps us to stay you know, uh, on course and helping each other because we are different for a purpose. But God's, look at God's big idea. God's big idea was, you know, when he created mankind and put him on earth, was to extend the kingdom of heaven to earth. So it was basically, you know, God, as you know, it's a spirit. He lives in heaven. So he wanted to extend his influence, his rulership from heaven to earth. And he wanted to do that through mankind. And that is why he gave us his image and his likeness for the purpose of uh, the assignment that he has given us. So as you are, you are exactly what is required to change, to change the world. And we are, as uh, Dr. Dave Barrows put it so, so beautifully on Sunday, I think that, teach, that teaching, I, I recommend that teaching to everyone who is, who is uh, serious about the issues of the kingdom because it, it unpacks so much things that are needed right now. You know, because even if you are a politician or you, are, you have a political party or whatever club you, 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 you belong in, you are in that club uh, to bring representation. When, uh, you know, Dr. Dave Barrows actually defined representation, you know, and he breaks it down to a prefix re, which means uh, doing it again and present, uh, he said uh, put in display. So when you are representing, you are putting, you are putting in display again. So that is what we are to do. We are to represent and become the representation of God on the earth and so that we can be able to influence the world with the kingdom. So uh, you don't have to leave the place where you are influencing. Stay there and change, and change the culture there. You know, whether it's, it's, it's politics or it's government, get involved in all those uh, areas because we need to have influence in all those areas. And of course, it was God's intention. We see this uh, through the, the prophet Habakkuk, who said that, uh, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God as the water covers the sea. Can you imagine you know, when the culture of heaven, through us obeying the statutes and the, and the wisdom which is in God's word, and we bring the culture of heaven on the earth, the Bible says that uh, that culture is to fill the earth just like the water covers the sea. In other words, there should be so much goodness going on. There should be so much righteousness going on in the world that we are not able to see all the other ills. Why? Because the culture of heaven is filling the whole earth. That is why. That is, and that is what God sent us to do. So, so become that. So it says it shall be the, 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 the whole earth shall be filled with the knowledge uh, of, the, of, the, of the glory of God as the water covers the sea. That word glory is a very interesting word because it actually talks about uh, the weighty of his uh, you know, presence and, 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 and the imprint and the impact of his culture on earth. So this whole earth is supposed to be filled with the culture of heaven. So in other words, how things are happening in heaven is how they are to happen here on earth. And he does that through you and I. So in our diversity, we should realize that we are different 
for a reason and for a purpose because all of us were created to come on earth and, uh, and, 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 and represent him in all the different areas. There are many, many areas and, and, and pillars of influence, you know, and I'm going to go through them quickly. Uh, you know, as we represent, obviously we are to influence and these are the areas that we need to influence in. And number one is politics. This has to do with government. Don't hate government. I know that some of you say, uh, you know, I'm a believer, I'm a pastor, I'm this and that. I do not do politics. If you don't do politics, then you don't understand your, your mission on earth. Because your mission on earth actually has to do with, uh, you, you know, with, with leading, with leading communities. And, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to leave these communities in the hands of people who, in the hands of the criminals and in the hands of people that cannot be trusted and people who are not enlightened. We're not going to do that. We're going to take responsibility of that pillar. So I challenge you to get involved in that pillar. And then, of course, the second one is the economy. We are to get involved in the economy. You can't leave it in the hands of, uh, you know, people who can't be trusted. Number three, you've got to get involved in the area of business. You've got to get involved in the area of law, the judici uh, judiciary, and also health, you know. Um, it's a big one now. We're, we're talking about COVID-19, uh, and then nobody trusts nothing. You know, people can't, don't even trust the, the, the vaccines that people are talking about. Why? Because of a, 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 distrust, a distrust and a broken trust uh, between, you know, uh, the populace and the leaders. Uh, you know, it's a big problem. And of course, the other one area that we must get involved in, uh, seriously so, and if you're in South Africa, obviously it's a big thing, is education. Why? Because we come from a history where the oppressors gave us, uh, gave the country two different sets of education uh, systems. They gave, uh, you know, there was a education for the whites. Of course, that education was to help them lead, manage, govern, and, 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 and so on. And the education that was given to, to us as, 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 as blacks who were oppressed was basically education that will help us to become uh, best slaves. I, I have no other way to put it. And that is why the new government had to change that. So... So the area of education is a big area where we need to retrain our people because our people's psyches have been damaged. have been damaged with wrong philosophy, uh, philosophy wrong psychology, wrong theology. So, so we are to, as a kingdom citizen, you have a responsibility to ensure that we can retrain our people. And of course the other one is the arts. This is the area of entertainment we've got to get involved in that and number eight is recreation sports you know uh, media we can't leave this in wrong hands because i mean media is so powerful that uh, you know you have seen us celebrating even doing early celebrations of a win of a president in the united states why because the media said so you know, even before the, offic the, 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 the officials who are designated and whose responsibility it is by law to announce certain things, the media becomes more powerful. So you can't leave these things in the hands of the wrong people. You know, it's time for kingdom uh, people to get involved in, this, in, 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 in these issues. You know, and of course the other one is social. These are relationships. We've got to get involved. You know, because we got to redefine again what family is. And all these are issues that relate uh, to our diversity. So, because I have limited time, I'm going to move a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, quick, quicker. So, this dominion mandate, that uh, leadership mandate that God has given us, uh, you know, I, I, I looked again at, at how Dr. Miles Monroe defined this word, and he said it actually means, and, and it's not just him, but it's what the, the, the dictionaries define it also. It says it's to govern, it means to rule, it means to control, it means to manage, it means to lead. So the word uh, dominion, don't just think of it as a spiritual word, because that word is it's pregnant with spiritual truth and natural truth. Okay, so we are here to lead, we are here to rule, we are here to control, we are here to manage. We can't leave that management contract uh, to the devil because we, you know what's going to happen with our world. So, so uh, not getting involved as, as believers is not, 
is definitely not helping. However, our philosophy, of course, as leaders, is that everybody in the kingdom uh, philosophy that we believe in is that we believe everybody was born to lead. In our diversity, in our differences, we believe that all humans were born to, live, uh, to lead. And we also believe that trapped in every follower is a hidden leader. We also believe that there is potential residing in, every, in, in, in every, everybody, everyone who is created. The fact that you, you arrive in the world is because there is an assignment for you to do. So that capacity to become a leader also resides in you. So do not forget this awesome responsibility uh, that we have. And of course, in the South African context, you know, uh, we have today, we are sitting at 59.4 million people. You know, that's a lot of people in the country. And 81% of, of those are blacks. These are people who are not allowed to become anything. So you can imagine if, uh, if what I see, you know, and what I saw since 1994 has been achieved by, you know, by a, 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 a meaningful participation of a less than 10% of our economy. Imagine what everybody else could do even to boost our GDP, you know, because gross domestic product means looks at how everybody is, uh, is participating in building the economies of their own world. So uh, even though you, 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 you operate in your own community, you must remember that uh, we are part of the bigger picture of our bigger communities in our cities, and also we are part of our our. our, our uh, our organizations and the country and the world because we are we are citizens of the world so we need to always remember that we are here to give hope to the whole world so unity in diversity uh, becomes very uh, critical uh, if we are to be successful as humans and uh, of course I have got a picture there uh, that picture is called it's a picture called the pointless painting uh, the painter of this picture actually used, uh, he didn't use a brush to paint it. He used very fine dots, you know, diff of different colors to make a picture which look, uh, you know, so beautiful in the eyes of the beholder. Using this pointless painting, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, a, uh, a pointless pen with, the, with different colors. You know, actually, if you look at it with a, with a magnifying glass, you will see that basically it's a, this picture is made out of dots. That is just to say that, uh, you know, all of us have been created differently, but we make the bigger picture to look the way it looks. And I say that uh, also in this one that uh, you can employ people's hands, you can employ their heads, but their hearts, they have to volunteer. You know, and uh, as we deal with diversity, if we are not careful in dealing uh, with, 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 with diversity, uh, we will lose a lot from people who don't look like us. Because, you know, God didn't create us to be the same, and he created us to be different for a reason. So as people come to your workplace, and with the, they come to your whatever organization you have, they have come to be... Uh, you know, to discharge their God-given uh, responsibility. Give them space to function. L listen to them. Hear them out. And you will see your organization will be, will be successful. And of course, as South Africans here, we, uh, you know, we, we're moving from a history where, you know, we have jobs which were reserved for just for whites, business rights for them, uh, pass laws for us, uh, because we are not allowed to be in the cities after six without a passport in our own country. <laughs> and of course, apart from education, as I said, we're also forced in terms of the Act, in terms of Group Areas Act, and the social economic circumstances of our people were, were, were very bad. So I say this to say that you cannot take a person that has been shackled in chains for a year and then free him, then bring him to the starting of the line of a race and then tell him you are free to compete with the others and still think that you are totally fair because you are unfair. Okay, so we got to take everybody, uh, even including the people who 
were psychologically damaged uh, because apartheid damaged the minds of the people. And I'm using apartheid for South Africa because that's where I, 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 I was born and that's where I am. But I mean, in your country, they, these stories, as I travel around the world, I've done over 40 countries so far. And uh, I find that uh, when I go to many of these so-called third world countries, that uh, the stories are the same. They, 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 it could be different here and there, but the, the gist of the stories on how these uh, countries were, you know, oppressed are very much the same. So uh, people who have been oppressed like that, we can't just take them to the beginning of the, of the race and say compete with the others and believe that we are totally fair. We definitely are not fair. So, of course, uh, they, wh why are the oppressors uh, not wanting to let go? Of course... Uh, there's issues about job security, there's fear of loss of control, uh, there is uh, a re re resistance to change, and uh, also there's issue of poor self-worth. It's amazing. You know, for you to be able to, to want to dominate other people who are different from you is because you have got a poor self-concept and poor self-image of yourself. Because... You know, it's, it's, a, it's a sign of, uh, of, 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 of self-hate. When you hate yourself, obviously you hate the other creatures that God has created. And, uh, of course, there's also a fear of loss, you know, because wealth was accumulated, you know, uh, you know, because people were favored. We're not saying we want that wealth back, but we're saying let's understand that that had happened in the past. Let's let's agree and and start from there, uh, for a great uh, for a great uh, move forward, uh, as we as we help each other. I have five minutes left, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap up. So, uh, of course, the other one is fear of equality. I have learned that uh, you know white people are not really you know in my country that I have spoken to and so on. Uh, the biggest thing that I find to be threat to, to many is fear of equality. Okay? And this is what we're talking about. God created us equally. Some people have problems, <laughs> with, with, with big problems with that. You know, they say, no, we understand you can have this and that and that, but you can't say you are equal to us. Okay, I've seen, you know, uh, Facebook posts and stuff like that by s some loonies who, who want to suggest that they are better uh, to other people because of their skin color. Uh, we, 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 need to get, we need to get over that. We need to celebrate these differences and, uh, and, and move forward as a country. And of course, they say, there's a fear of loss of the comfort zone. Everybody wants to be in the comfort zone. But how many know that you cannot grow in your comfort zone? There is no growth in comfort zones. For you to grow, you must launch out into the deep, go out to where other people are, and uh, you will be amazed what you will learn. I have friends from almost every culture, ethnic, ethnic groups, uh, uh, you know, race groups, and so forth. That is what, and it's, it's so exciting. I'm not the same person. Why? Because I learn from all of them. You know, I learn from everybody uh, that I meet. Why? Because I believe that everybody that you meet is important. So what is diversity really means? You know, everyone, of course, is talking about it. The media promotes it and businesses are training on, on it. Politicians support it. But what exactly is diversity? The answer is that, uh, you know, you can think of, you know, is it gender, is it, uh, is it race, is it cultural background, is it personality type? And the answer is, of course, is yes. And of course, much more, because diversity, basically, it's, it means differences in people. And all of us are different. And as I said, we are different for a reason. So uh, in my book, uh, I talk about the 14, di we talk about the 14 dimension of diversity. And you can get the book and, and read it. It's, it's all the different things that you know, make us uh, diverse. But here is the interesting uh, thought that I want to leave with you. You know, whether you like it or not, or whether you know it or not, all of us have been culturally programmed, all of us. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter uh, from what uh, window, <laughs> you know, what window you're looking it from. 
all of us have been have been uh, have been culturally programmed you know uh, wherever we come from we have had messages as we are growing up there are key sources of this cultural program programming that influence our behavior and the way we think and of course you will agree with me that one of those is race people of different races were told different things about other races you know as i was growing up i was, I was told of course that white people are more special than us you know we were told certain things about the indian people and so on and all those messages are still very fresh in us and when we sometimes if we're not careful we'll find that when we interact with people we interact with them from that program and that can be very dangerous and number two it's issues of ethnicity you know uh, ethnicity knows the fact that uh, you might all look you know black sort of navy blue or white sort of pink uh, but the reality is that you're still different because even though you all look white you you know you have germans you've got uh, french you've got you've got all different uh, different uh, you know eth eth ethnicity within a particular race a race group and of course the third one is religion whatever your religion say about other people has a way of you know programming you uh, to think a certain way and also to relate with people in a particular uh, way and of course the other one is parents our, our parents gave us different messages about uh, you know people and uh, people that we interact with and of course it's, the other one is education and we have also work and organizations so this all these things you know all this institution for a lack of better word that I, I call them institutions they have programmed us the way we think you know when everybody is born, as Nelson Mandela said, that uh, we know uh, no child is born hating another, but these are the things that we are taught. Uh, these are things that we learn. But how many know that it's more difficult to unlearn than it is to learn? But we got to, we got to learn, and uh, you know, to, and to unlearn some of these things, uh, no matter how difficult it is, so that uh, we can remain relevant we can remain unified with other people who don't look like us so so it's very very important so a clear self-awareness of cultural programming is crucial if managers and leaders are to embrace uh, the viewpoint that people are a source of competitive advantage in the business environment even even in our communities people are a source of competitive advantage so let's ensure that uh, we stay uh, united and we can value our diversities. What are these the barriers to diversity? Of course, diversity itself is not a problem. Uh, it can add value to our organizations. Our differences always has always been there, and they are what make us unique. And the, but the problem lies with our attitude towards diversity. So if your attitude toward diversity is a, is a bad one, obviously uh, a, bad, a bad tree is not going to produce a bad, uh, I mean a, a good fruit. So the people who have negative attitudes towards other people's differences often engage behaviors that are stereotypical and prejudicial. You know? uh, and there are words that when you deal with diversity all the time, you've got to remember. And the first one that I want to share with you before I close uh, it's prejudice. There's the word prejudice. What is prejudice? Actually, prejudice is again is a grammatical construct of a of of of, of a prefix pre and uh, the word judge. So when you say someone is prejudiced, you say they like to make judgment calls before they obtain something very crucial, which is called information. So uh, if you are prejudiced. You, it, it means that you like to make judgment calls on maybe on people uh, of a particular religion or race or gender group and, 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 and you, you prejudge them on the basis of your prayer knowledge of what you learn from up there from uh, uh, you know, cultural programming as we, as we said. So, so be very, very, you know, be aware of your own prejudices. You know, and all of us have those. The second word that I want to leave with you is the word stereotyping. So stereotyping occurs when we apply our biases to all members of a particular group. 
So if I have an issue or I came across an Indian who treated me a particular way or a white or a black who treated me in a particular way, I, we have a tendency of saying all blacks are stupid or all blacks are lazy or all whites are racist because there are wonderful white people who have no DNA of racism. So stereotyping is a, is a, is a serious one. Don't take a blanket approach and put it across a race group uh, of people. That is, that, 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 is, that is dangerous. And the other one is ethnocentrism. Ethnocentrism is when we believe, it's a belief in the inherent, in inherent superiority of one's own group and culture accompanied by a feeling of contempt of other groups and cultures. It's a tendency to view alien groups and cultures in terms of one's own. That can be very dangerous. So, of course, I don't have much time, but as you look at, on that screen, if I had time, I would take you through some of the exercises in terms of what you see, because people see uh, different things all the time. Here is another one that I would like to test with you quickly. Uh, if you can see Paris in the spring, uh, once in a lifetime, bad in the hand, uh, you are wrong, because we don't have that. On that board, we've got Paris in the, the spring, we've got once in a, a lifetime, and we've got bad in the, their hand. But why did you not see, some of you, what I, you know, what is on the board, but you decided to see what I was reading. Why? Because we are, we, you know, we, we, we would like to see what we are familiar with. And when you deal with diversity, it can be very dangerous. And of course, uh, there are some uh, who are in denial. They always say, I don't see color. If you don't see color, then I'm very suspicious of you. Because diversity and celebrating diversity doesn't mean uh, that you're oblivious to seeing color, you, that you can't see color. It means that you must be able to see color and say, they are different from me and I accept them and I embrace them for their differences. When you don't see color, usually you're hiding something. So see color celebrate diversity, celebrate the differences. And remember that sometimes the chains that prevent us from being free are more mental than physical. I don't have much time, and I hope that you have learned something in today's broadcast. Thank you very much. God bless you, and I will see you at the top. God bless you. Hi, this is Pastor David Knowles taking a few minutes to encourage you to invest in the kingdom. I'm so glad that you joined us this week, especially that we are celebrating and honoring our founders who have departed from us six years ago. I am so grateful that you are able to take this financial journey together to improve our financial situations as Kingdom citizens. We made it to step three. With the two scripture references, Philippians 4 and 19, and my God will meet all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, and Psalms 37 and 4, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of our heart. One is based on our needs, and the other one is based on our desires. For our purposes, we were to write down our financial needs and our financial desires. I hope that you were able to find the scripture references with each one. Faith in these scriptures would give you hope of what, God's, of what God is able to do in fulfilling them. The conclusive scripture, however, is this. Matthew 6 and 33 But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you as well. Everything that you do should have a kingdom priority first. We are so encouraged through your continued support in partnering with us each week as we journey through this time together. Bahamas Faith Ministries International is committed to spreading the kingdom message in every world to the end of the earth. So your continuing partnering with us helps us to do this through your giving in one of these four ways. One, online at our website at www.bahamasfaithministries.org and go to the Give button. Number two is go come here at the Miles Monroe Diplomat Center at our seed box, which is open 24 hours, and our curfew has been lifted a little bit, and so you can come here and give that way. Number three, through direct deposits in the Bahamas. Our bank is the Bank of the Bahamas. 
Our account is in the name of Bahamas Faith Ministries. Our account number is 135-00-00886. Our branch is Shirley Street. Our branch number is 03157. Number four, you can give by credit card by calling the number 242-477-1871 and someone will take the information. After you have given, please send us an email through bfmigive at gmail.com. It's so important that you do send us the email. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for investing in the kingdom. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We are so blessed through your giving and through your, through your investment. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for those that, have, those that have given and those that will continue to give this week and the following weeks to come. We ask you, Father, to pour out a blessing that every need that they have, that there's no lack in their homes, there's no lack in their families. Every need that they, that they have is provided in Jesus' name. We declare and we decree that they are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. What an amazing presentation filled with so much goodies. We learned that your difference is what makes you unique and that you are perfect for your purpose. What also stood out for me was that unity requires diversification and that unity is not always uniformity. So as we go out and continue this week, let us continue to lead, let us continue to dominate, and let us continue to break through the barriers. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Years ago, many Bahamians discovered Bahamas Faith Ministries, a revolutionary and impactful ministry, transcending national borders and challenging traditions. The goal then and now was transforming followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We have gone through tragedy and triumph and have emerged with a new focus and a renewed vision. Rediscover the worship and the message of the kingdom and see what's new about BFM, now led by Pastor Dave and Angie Burrows, multi-generational leaders focused on making the vision plain to a new generation. There's a place for everyone here. Children, youth, millennials, singles, families, professionals, and entrepreneurs. Join us Sundays at 10 at our Carmichael Road campus or online via the BFMI app. We promise you, your life will never be the same.